you like it or not, the boost formula defined and is still defining an entire era of Sonic. We've seen several attempts at it, some obviously better than others, but I hardly ever see people talk about the one that started it all. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be discussing a game that's far from two-dimensional despite its focus on 2D gameplay. And most importantly, unlike the game that came out soon after it, this was in no way a rush job. Hello everybody, I'm Garilla64, and I don't apologize for any bad puns ever, and neither should you. Sonic Rush is a strange game for me because it's something I'm really familiar with now, but it's not because I have a lot of nostalgia for it. I did actually own this game back in 2005 on my original DS, but I kinda hated it because, I mean, one thing that stayed constant throughout my entire life is that I am not very good at video games. I remembered frustration and then ambivalence in that order before I sold the game off, never to think about it again. At least that's what I thought then, because I didn't realize years into the future I'd be running a Sonic-centric YouTube channel. But don't get me wrong, I do do a lot of things, including stuff on Twitch, which you can follow if you want to see me stream. Released in 2005, Sonic Rush was the very first Sonic game to ever appear on the Nintendo DS. Much like its advanced siblings before it, the game was made by Dimps and Sonic Team together. Man, what a dream team. Until later on, of course, but we're not here to talk about that yet. This game once again takes Sonic back to his 2D roots, but this time his roots have been injected with gamer fuel and the boys faster than ever before. Holding down the Y button gives Sonic a burst of speed and immunity to enemies that might cross his path. We would eventually come to know this as the boost, and it hasn't really changed too much since then aside from adding some airborne action later on. Sonic also has the ability to homing attack and air dash by pressing the R button, which is an essential skill for keeping your speed up during gameplay. The R button also allows you to do these special jumps off ramps and springs like in Sonic Advance 2, but that's not all you can do with ramps and springs. Sonic Rush? More like... Son Trick Rush? Your threats don't scare me. So tricks are basically the name of the game if my stupid pun has anything to say about it. If you mash the B button and control pad like you're a speedrunner sitting through the same dialogue for the 4,000th time, Sonic will just style on him. This aside from raking in the points, fills up your boost meter and makes the game, and this is totally accurate, I promise you, a rush. The amount of footage I have of me just doing tricks like this is obnoxious. It probably drove my editor crazy. Yeah, cool, all right, yeah, okay, yeah, cool, I got, yeah, all right, yeah, cool, okay, yeah, yeah, ow. Rush starts off by immediately throwing you into the action. This was so abrupt that I actually went to check online to make sure my game wasn't bugging out or something. But this is something that we'd see again in Sonic Colors a few years down the road, and I like it, honestly. As Sonic, you blaze through Leaf Storm, and then you're at the first boss already. Eggman's in this big ol' snake thing, and it has two different insta-kill attacks for some reason. That's a big no-no in my book. After taking care of him, though, he flies off, leaving Mysterious Jewel behind. But before Sonic can pilfer it for himself, a cyclone of fire erupts from the ground. Standing before him is a brand new character, and one that many will end up calling their favorite someday. Blaze takes the emerald and hightails it out of there, and Sonic just lets it happen. He does not do a lot in this game, honestly. But jeez, Blaze, why does Sega let you have two emeralds? Maybe I should go get some of my own. After all, that one doesn't look chaotic enough for me. The Chaos Emeralds are back for this game, and I'm gonna drop my first of a couple hot takes for this video. I believe this game has the best special stages and special stage entrances in the entire series. When you're boosting through the levels, you might come across something that looks a little bit like one of those rotating things from Sonic Advance 2. If you grab it, it doesn't do anything. But if you happen to hold down the Y button with at least one full boost bar, Sonic tears a hole right in the space-time continuum and enters a special stage. Alright, so you know how this is on the DS? Well, one of the major selling points of the console was touch controls, so you know they had to force it in somewhere. Now, before you groan and bellyache about it, if this controlled normally, it would be worse off. The game gives you time to get your stylus ready, and once you're all set, you enter a familiar halfpipe, but this time you control Sonic by poking the touchscreen where you want him to go. Sure, that might sound terrible, but it's actually one of the most responsive uses of the DS's touchscreen that I have ever experienced. Aside from that, all you're doing is collecting rings, dodging mines, and doing some sick tricks by touching these number pop-ups in order. These things range from really easy to pretty dang difficult, but the best part about it is, unlike the games that came before it, you can try these over and over again as long as you've got enough boost energy to re-enter the stage. You can even take a quick walk, build it back up, and then go for it again. The game does limit your ability to fill the meter if you use the same source to do it more than once, so this ends up being a very fair and balanced set of special stages that have not been topped to this day. Next up, Sonic goes to Water Palace, where, you guessed it, there's a lot of water. But it's not one of those bad water levels. I mean, heck, it was good enough to be brought back in Generation 3DS, and the music... Hey! 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 
I know I haven't mentioned it yet, but Hideki Naganuma knocks it so far out of the park that it loops around the Earth, and then he knocks it out of the park again. If I could only listen to one OST for the rest of my life, this would be very, very high on the list. If not, my number one choice. The Egg Plesiosaur is next, and I can't stop thinking about Plesiosaur from Mega Man Star Force 2. I got hit by a lot of stuff in this fight, but it wasn't hard per se. You're also underwater the entire time, but I didn't hear the drowning music even once, since you get to breathe after every single hit. It's at this point we learn that Dr. Eggman isn't really Dr. Eggman. He's Dr. Eggman with different clothes, or as the game calls him, Dr. Eggman Nega. Who is he? I don't know. He's from another dimension. Or the future. Or something. Maybe we'll find out later and say I'll just retcon it. I mean, it's not like it's really important, right? Mirage Road now takes the stage, and it brings with it one of my least favorite things about this game. Forced combat. Among the many things that I will never forgive Sonic Heroes for, forced combat is at the top of the list, because it has infected so many of the other games at this point. It makes even less sense in this game, because all you end up doing is pressing the Y button to clear the room, waiting, then pressing it again when more enemies fall. It adds nothing to the game, and it really doesn't need to be here. There's also two auto-scrolling segments in the zone where you ride this lift, and it can get pretty annoying since they go on for way too long. But the second one randomly flips the game into a beat-em-up looking thing with 3D movement? It's cool, I guess? I just really don't like auto-scrolling levels, especially in Sonic games, because you're supposed to be rewarded by going fast for doing well, but this just stops you in your tracks regardless of how well you're doing. Now, Eggman was always a stinker and never knew how to bug off, so he took his strengths and combined them into one. The Stink Bug boss rolls a giant explosive at you, and you just need to hit it back when he turns around. Sonic then watches as Eggman Nega escapes again, not bothering to stop him. On the way to Carnival Casino Night Park Zone, Vanilla tells Sonic that Cream ran off with some person wearing purple, and they decide that that must be the girl from before, because no one in the main cast wears purple, and no one ever changes their clothes. Night Carnival rocks a familiar, flashy, and colorful aesthetic that even calls back to Carnival Night by having some electricity-based gimmicks where you need to enable the power to use certain rails or pathways. Man, who would have expected that Night Carnival would have throwbacks to Carnival Night? That's honestly so out of left field. This stage is where it starts to become obvious that the people that made Sonic Advance 2 made this game. There are bottomless pits everywhere in this game, and sometimes there's no way to recover from even a tiny mistake like letting go of one of these swinging things too early. I got stuck here and had no choice but to die because they just don't reset. Just saying, they probably could have had a pathway down here that leads back up to the top area, punishing the player by making them take more time to correct their mistake, but no, you pushed the jump button too soon. Your sentence is death. Third boss is some kind of carnival ride, you hit the non-egg side when it blows a fuse, and then you deal damage when Eggman Nega is lowered. After you hit him though, he'll drop this little friend that launches you into the air high enough to hit Eggman again, so this fight goes by really quick. You've probably noticed at this point that I haven't been boosting during boss fights, and that's because you can't. I usually don't like it when devs change up how a game plays for a big part of the game like this. For example, I didn't like Sonic Advance 2's boss fights because they did just that. But I didn't really miss the boost in these fights because the bosses are slow and the arena is small. Boosting would have just gotten me killed more often than would have helped. Sonic and Tails then come across a huge rock and someone whose head is filled with rocks, who informs them that a feline with an attitude recently beat him up. Yep, that's my life alright. The duo then enters what might be some kind of gun battleship since all the enemies are sprite recreations of the robots from SA2. This one's a lot more enclosed than the others and has a ton of enemy rooms, not to mention there are two parts where if you're running through the stage like any normal person would be, they crush you to death out of nowhere. It happens once in the first act and once in the second, and it feels like a really lazy way to hamper the player's progress. Thankfully, if you get a game over, you don't need to get the Chaos Emerald for that stage again, but you will have to do both acts over unless you've already made it to the boss. Speaking of that, it's boss one again, except this time he realized he could beat me by boring me to death while I wait for him to be done with his dumb missile attack. Sonic and Tails finally find Blazing Cream, and Sonic can't go five seconds without forcing his FRIENDSHIP IS THE ULTIMATE POWER thing on this person he's never met before. Blazing Cream get beamed up, and thus begins, I feel like, the most irritating level, but it's only slightly worse than Huge Crisis. Altitude Limit is one giant bottomless pit, but I didn't find myself falling into it as often as the previous levels. It has this gimmick where you pilot these jet platforms upwards through enemies or occasionally Flappy Bird obstacle courses, and I remember them being a lot harder than they were. Then again, the last time I played this I was streaming, so the streamer's curse was in full effect. Boy. Boy. Did you really just go on and do that? Possibly calling back to Sonic 2 Game Gear, they also have these 3D paragliding sections. As usual, they overstay their welcome, but the second one at least feels quick enough to be fun. Boss 6 is another tedious affair. You gotta wait for him to try and jump on you or rush at you before you can hit him, and his other attacks take forever. He also has another insta-kill move, but if you know how to press A and B, you are not in any real danger. In my notes for this part, I just have Cat Girl Blaze makes Amy upsetty, and I don't remember if I had another joke planned for this, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. 
Deadline is all about gravity, rockets, and anxiety. Every time I was on one of these rockets, I forgot which direction did what, and I was always expecting to die, but to my astonishment, they only kill you with one of these one time, and it's at the very end of the stage. It's actually really good level design, because they teach you how to use it for a long time before they kill you with it. And even when you die, there's a checkpoint right before it, so honestly, it's not even something to complain about. The boss, however, is not Eggman this time. Instead, Blaze gets really upset at herself that Sonic is trying to help her, and she decides to assault him because who wouldn't want to assault this face? Blaze surprisingly breaks the tradition of character battles in this series being pathetically easy. It fakes you out at first, making you think it's gonna be easy, and then it actually provides a little challenge, followed by a really iconic moment where Sonic and Blaze have a good old Dragon Ball Z struggle before Sonic emerges victorious, and then he worries more about Eggman getting away than how he just threw Blaze into the cold vacuum of space. After Cream and Tails arrive, Sonic delivers what I can only assume to be something he read in two different fortune cookies, and that's enough for Blaze to begin to trust him. Who needs good writing? I don't. Since Blaze is in no shape to fight, Sonic heads off to fight the final boss, and this robot is massive. You deal damage to it by avoiding its attacks, striking its arm, and then climbing it Shadow of the Colossus style to hit the cockpit. This gets progressively harder and its attacks become more and more savage over time, but this boss fight is really fun and really, really fair. I don't know what it is about this specific game, they just got a lot of stuff right. Like, some of these attacks take forever to dodge, but afterwards they don't make you wait to hit him again, he gives you a chance every single time. By the end of it, I was holding on for dear life with zero rings, and I just managed to land the final hit, and it was so satisfying. And that's Sonic's story. It ends off with some nice art along the lines of what we saw in the Sonic Advance 2 cutscenes, and then it ends, and you're supposed to play the entire game again as Blaze. You do unlock her right after you beat the first boss, but personally playing them back to back is probably a better option than switching back and forth. Blaze and Sonic explore the exact same levels, but control slightly differently. It's almost not enough to notice, but I believe Blaze is a tiny bit slower than Sonic, and instead of a homing attack, she has a hover move if you hold down the R button. Her extra jumps when pressing the R button are also way stronger than Sonic's, so she can pull off more tricks in the air, and also allows her to reach new alternate pathways that Sonic couldn't reach. For example, there's that area where I got tripped up in Night Carnival before. See? It's a thing of the past. Overall, I think I had less fun playing as Blaze, though, because of these changes they made to her playstyle, and I never really got used to how she handled. Also, it didn't help that I was searching high and low for the emerald portals in the first level before realizing you just get the soul emeralds from beating bosses. Yeah, Blaze doesn't just stand there like Sonic does when he wins. She busts this guy up to get her stuff back. Her story really isn't anything special either, it's basically Cream not understanding the whole stranger danger thing for a while until Blaze and her form a friendship. The only major change in her story is that of course she fights Sonic instead of herself, and Sonic is out for blood. Do you have any idea how impossible it is to create a tornado in space, yet he does it anyway because he's that serious about beating Blaze? But once you finish that up, you fight the final boss again, and then last story unlocks. It's revealed that the two Eggmen have been trying to acquire both sets of shiny rocks to do bad things. Shocker. Thanks to that, Sonic and Blaze's dimensions are colliding, and this will bring about the destruction of everything. Sonic teaches Blaze how to use the Soul Emeralds properly, and then the two transform for one final attack on their foes. It starts off looking a lot like Doomsday Zone, and then it just turns into every other supersonic fight for the most part. Wait for Eggman to throw some stuff at you, and then hit it back. After a couple hits, the game switches you to Blaze, who takes on Eggman Nega, but instead of ramming into projectiles, she makes her own projectiles by hitting the A button. Of the two playstyles, I think Blaze offers a much more unique and fun experience, but you end up playing as Sonic more often during this fight, and it gets really chaotic and stressful, but it's not bad. Sonic and Blaze team up for one final attack, and that's game. Before being separated, the two recreate the ending of the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour and vow they'll see each other again. And see each other again they shall in the sequel. I love this game. And I'm willing to stake my entire reputation on that, and that's big because I don't even like steak. I think this is one of the best 2D Sonic games that has ever come out. It has ridiculously fun gameplay, introduces a fan-favorite character who'd become muddled in confusion thanks to the gem released in 2006 we all know about. But regardless of that, this game also paved the way for not only three sequels, but also an entire new era of modern Sonic that I hold in very high regard. Mostly. And that's it for this one. God, I, I just really, really love this one, so I had a great time working on this. But anyway, if you like this video and you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell, follow my Twitter, and join the Discord to keep up with more Sonic reviews and other things that aren't Sonic reviews, because I do a lot of things. I'd also like to give a huge thank you to my current supporters, who are Alex Sniff, Cutie Monica, Common CJ, Danny Dauber, Mike TGC, 
Raiden Still Plays, Chaos, Cosmic Mushroom, Silva PhD, Chaotic Mercenary, Tidal, Tech Guy, Jaded Indolence, Jeremy, Lucas Tallman, Mega Traffic Cone, Crystal. And on Patreon, we have AJ Rat and Rob Morrison. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, it really means a lot. And if you have any interest in supporting yourself, you can either check out the join button beneath the video or check out the card up at the top of the screen to check out my Patreon. You get the same stuff from both places, including special blooper videos for every single review I release. So if you want to see those, make sure to check it out and help out or something if you want. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good one, everybody. I'll see you next time.